Hey everyone, Green Dave here from the Florida Insider Fishing Report and the Texas Insider Fishing Report. And as you can see, it looks pretty wahoo-y up here. Yes, it does. And that's it's very shiny. Gonna, it's very shiny. We're going to get yep. into some Wahoo 101 tips today. Right. It's a skill. You really have to know what you're doing if you're going out there to target wahoo. Yeah. I used to call it the elusive zebra fish because I never, we went out for a couple of years and I just couldn't catch one. Mm -hmm. And the day that I caught one was on Sportsman Adventures with Captain Rick Murphy. Were you targeting that day? And we caught 12. Of course we were. Exactly. It's a Wahoo show. Well, you, when I go fishing up where I live out of the Cape, where I learned to go fishing, we fished for two fish every day, you know, dolphins and wahoos. That was what we wanted to catch. And I started catching billfish later, but I still want to go catch dolphins and wahoos. That's why I Besties. go fishing. So. You know, when you're out catching wahoos, you know, a wahoo is a mackerel fish, so they have very sharp teeth, they're very fast fish, and they feed by coming in with their mouth open and just taking the tail off of a bait, and then they come back around and get the rest. Right. So, you know, a lot of the stuff that we use, we try to get the hook as far back into the tail as we can, or we'll even pull a lure with a ballyhoo and have a little stinger rig on it, like like one of these right here. This is a, this is a, a typical island lure rig on nine wire, but right? it's number nine wire. Maybe might no, I'll go down to number seven, uh, but usually it's number nine wire and an island lure and a ballyhoo. And after I put the ballyhoo on here, I'll put a little stinger rig on. You know, this 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 hook will be sticking out of the ballyhoo, and I'll just I have a bunch of these made up, as you can see. I got a right. ton of little uh, number two or number four. Four, you know, four strength or double strength treble hooks, and when I rig up my ballyhoo rigs, after I put the ballyhoo on them, I'll put a little piece of wire, number five, and probably usually number five or number three even, just to make it so it's very stealthy. Right. Because I'm, when I'm pulling these, I'm not going as fast, so you know they can get a good eyeball on stuff better than if you're using What's high speed stuff. What's not as fast? Uh, you know, typical dead bait speeds, uh, five to seven knots. Okay. And you can go maybe eight knots, you know, when you have one of these on the front and your ballyhoos will last a little while longer. But anyway, this thing goes, this little stinger rig goes right back in the tail mm -hmm. and it stays back there. And when this thing's swimming along, the fish comes and he tries to grab that tail and sometimes he'll get a big mouthful of that treble hook. Okay, and, 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 and have... it's a small treble hook, but it'll hold. Believe it or not, it'll go in really good and it'll hold. A, a wahoo's mouth is a rocky place. <laughs> it's and, not a place uh, you want to be. <laughs> at, where a seed can find no purchase. So, you know, you want to have something small sometimes and very, very sharp that'll penetrate that bone. And, right. And, get and would you set. have three or four of these out, like lines? Yeah, I'll have, I'll have, you know, I'll run up to eight lines on my little center console boat. But, uh, and you usually have a couple of Different. naked. Oh, yeah, I usually have a couple of Different naked ways. ones. I like to have an island lure sea star on the short you know, with a ballyhoo in it and a, and a stinger rig on it as well. And those work really well. A lot of times in that same spread, I'll have a big cairn swimmer like this, or, you know, a big trolling plug that, because a lot of these things get slammed a lot. Yeah. The hookup ratio, even with the single hooks, if you replace the double hooks on here and put single hooks and nice swivels, mm -hmm. the hookup ratio is not that great. They get slammed a lot, but at least you'll know that, hey, there's some wahoos around. Right. Now, what everybody's doing nowadays is doing uh, high-speed trolling. And I got some diamond stuff here. Diamond, they make everything from the swivel all the way down to the lure. And what you'll do is when you're going, any uh, high-speed trolling is anything over 12 knots. And that's what they consider high-speed high trolling. And you'll want to start using a high-speed shock, shock leader once you get going that fast. And how that works is you'll have the main line, your main line, down to a swivel. And then you'll put one of these trolling swivels on. Put a trolling swivel on. Then your shock leader at that end, actually. Your main line will come to this end. Mm -hmm. Then your shock leader, 24 feet. A lot of guys go way overboard with it. Diamond makes them 24 feet for a reason. That's probably plenty. Right. You know, and you're going to have to hand yeah. line all that in, by Once the way. Once this weight line. comes in, you're going to have to hand line all that in. You're going to have to hand line the fish to the boat. Another thing, when you do have a hookup, mm -hmm. don't take the boat out of gear. No. You got to keep going. <laughs> you got to keep going. Yeah, because... especially when you're especially when you're high speed trolling, because when you're high speed trolling, uh, that, that deceleration... That deceleration plus it's a big it's a big smack and that's what these are for is a cushion right really because monofilament stretches about 10 to 20 percent depending on the on the brand when it's wet so if you've got you know 24 feet you know it'll stretch 10 percent of that or 20 percent sometimes mm -hmm. and that's a good that's a good stretch 
And you can see a lot of these these diamond lures. These are the brand new diamond high speed trolling Those are lures. Pretty. They're all real big and heavy, so they that. stay in the water. They've got various ones. You know, they got jets versus and, and regular hanging heads. You know, like this oh, yeah, uh, zebra candy. Heads there. Zebra yeah. candy. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what that one's called. But you know, a jet head jet heads work because they they supposedly make a little bubble trail. All these are rigged on really nice. Uh, 400 pound cable at the front and you can even get them rigged with uh, a nice hook set inside and there's 900 pound cable in the hook set because you you know a giant wahoo can can really damage uh, do some real damage on on even braided cable and stuff now if you don't want to if you don't want to do all that high speed trolling and 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 even just regular trolling you can target them with live baits if you go out and catch some live baits you know get you some r, &R tackle get, catch you some really good live baits like a big blue runner or even a any kind of bottom fish um, anything will work a lot of times and what you'll do is you'll make yourself a little live bait rig like this Ooh, i don't want to hook everything because they are they are getting pretty sticky mm -hmm. but you know you get you get you a live bait hook and you put that in the, in the bait's nose and then you stretch these down his back you know three or four little trebles depends on how big the bait is right. and you can just string them out and once you get that on the fish you just toss it out over the structure that you're fishing and just let it sit put it on a rod holder and let it sit out there you wouldn't believe the amount of big kingfish and wahoos that you can catch doing that by just putting out a live bait and letting it sit out there while you're bottom fishing or doing whatever you want to do at just another really time really catch a wahoo correct there you go correct. well let's talk about time of year because you mm -hmm. know there is a time for them well, and it depends on where you are. Um, winter time is probably the time when we catch the biggest ones. Yeah. Uh, January, February, March, even December. Um, it depends, but uh, winter time is the time when we get the great big ones Moons, in here. Tides, all that. I'm not Isn't a big, effects? you know. I'm not a. I don't. I don't. I don't keep accurate records, and I don't know anybody who does who keeps records, you know, but you know, they say, everybody says the week before the moon and a week after the moon is good fishing for everything. Mm -hmm. So I imagine that what would work for Wahoos in the, in the winter time too. Perfect, do you yeah. have a, a story that like, your first Wahoo or your favorite Wahoo catch? I caught one in a tournament once. We were, I was working at Sport Fishing Magazine and uh, we had a little inner tournament among the editors and, and a boat comp and the boat companies, mm -hmm. and we would jump from boat company to boat company each day and bring a group of anglers with us who were coming to look at the boats. And uh, it was down at the Isle Morada on the hump. So all of us were out there fishing against each other in this thing, and uh, I rigged up a black and red sea star, an island lure with a nice ballyhoo on it and I'm telling I'm rigging it up and one of the ladies is watching me she says oh that looks nice what are you gonna catch with that I said well, I'm gonna catch a big giant wahoo with it <laughs> and I threw it out there and there was some guy out there trumming pilchards for uh for the black fin mm -hmm. and we pulled right behind him and, and drag drug right through his uh his chum line there no. 50 pound wahoo oh, and I was a hero shoot. I was a hero that lady said he called it I said yeah yeah I was, I was yeah, very lucky that's, that's how good I am I was lucky I've caught a lot of bigger ones but that one was very uh very satisfying that was satisfying and memorable yeah all right Dave well that was very informational thank you so much um if you guys want to hear more tips like this make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel Captain McMurphy and ding that notification bell it'll be there forever forever